My guest today is a stand-up comedian who has performed at some of the most legendary comedy clubs in the nation. He has appeared on America's Got Talent numerous times. His name is Alex Hooper. It was a great conversation, and it was a great pleasure to have Alex on the show. Here is Alex Hooper. So where are you originally from, Alex? I am from Baltimore, Maryland. Baltimore, Maryland. Nice. And when did you make it out to, when did you make the move to, where did you move out to first? Was it LA, New York? No, I went to Pittsburgh first to go to school. I was there for like four years and I moved to LA at the end of 2008. So I have been here coming up on 13 years. 13 years. So from Maryland to Pittsburgh to Los Angeles now for just about 13 years. Yep. That's, that's the route. Nice, man. You know, they say it takes about 10 years to really get into the groove of things, and people don't really know what to think about that when they first start, but here you are 13 years later, and you're making noise, you're still going, but I bet a lot of people you saw when you started have sort of dissipated and gone about other careers and stuff. Oh, certainly. I mean, a lot of the times you don't even know that they're gone until like two years have passed, and somebody goes, hey, whatever happened to Kelly? And you're like, oh, yeah. What did happen to her? And then you like look her up real quick and you see that she's like a bank manager in <laughs> Vienna. And you're like, oh, I guess the dream wasn't for her. But yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's always going to take a lot of time. They say it takes 10 years. It's going to take as much time as it takes. And the fact that if you enjoy what you're doing, it doesn't really matter how much time it takes. Because I guarantee you, it's going to take longer than you want it to. So mm. better be happy doing it because it, it is a game of patience. Absolutely. If you expect like results every day, something huge happening, you start to really, it takes a toll on the mind and then the body and you need that sort of longevity to stick it out. It's not for everybody. Some people do end up doing other things and good for them, right? This is not for everyone, but this is... Well, the, it's about personal growth, right? Is that like, even like, I do need to move forward in some capacity every single day, whether it be personally, professionally, I do need to feel like I am a better, more well-rounded human than I was the day before. But that doesn't mean that it's just going to have every single day. I'm going to get another audition. That's going to be another TV show, another chance to record an album, another huge opportunity to be on like the best, biggest show, you know, all that stuff. But as long as you view these little increments every single day, I feel like all of that exponentially compounds and eventually you get to this giant thing that you've been looking at for so long from afar. What does that look like for you, becoming a more well-rounded person in those words? For you, Alex, what does that look like for you? So, I mean, I want to, I always want to be more intelligent. I want to be physically more fit. I want to be healthier. I want to be funnier. I want to be more creative. I want to be more prolific with my projects. I want to be able to love as many people as I possibly can, as many pugs as I can. Um, so it's a lot of, it's just a lot of me checking in with myself if I'm in a bad mood and saying, why are you, why do you feel like this? How do we get rid of it? So it doesn't infect other people. I want, I want people to come in contact with me and feel better that when they leave than when they did, when they first, uh, you know, came into my presence. So what can I do to break you out of your zone a little bit, make you laugh, make you feel silly, make you feel beautiful, whatever it may be. And so I consciously think about that all the time. Very inspiring, Alex. Where did this come from? Was this you as a, as a child? Did you grow up this way? Were you a theatrical person? No, I mean, theatrical person? Yeah, I mean, I always was a lot, very extra. But I guess I mean, like, you know, the one that love to tell the jokes, love to just see people respond. There's people like that, you know, who we love to make others smile, laugh. Yeah, no, I was, I used humor as a defense mechanism because I hated myself and everything about my life um, for, you know, there were a lot of reasons I could go into, but it really, that's why right now I have to make such a conscious effort over the past like seven, eight years specifically when I really started turning a corner and making my life the life that I actually wanted to live and realizing that it was 100% in my power to choose what happens to me. So at that point, then I really started thinking about, well, how can I just be better to be around toward myself and everyone else? Because one thing about any job that you do, whether it be enter entertainment, whether you're a plumber that has to work with other people, you need to be someone that people want to hang out with. 
You know, it's not, if you're the funniest comedian on the planet, but you are a piece of shit, asshole, boring person off stage. I, can I mm. cuss on here, by the way? I didn't hear. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Like if you're, if you're that person and nobody wants to hang out with you afterwards, who cares? how funny you are but if you're a person that oh man that guy is the best not only does he is he kill on stage he's so he's such a great comedian or artist but also then he asked me how i was doing out of nowhere he you know he bought me a little gift he wrote a nice comment on my instagram whatever it may be that i can see people have a little tick of dopamine because people give them to me all day too so i want to reciprocate that feeling and to me it's all just paying it forward the more there's not a limited number of places for success in this world. Every single person can be successful. That is possible. So the more I lift people up, the more they lift me up, and we all kind of climb together. And then it's just more fun. Very nice. Not a lot of people have that way of thinking. They sort of want to hold on to the assets they have and the resources. And with you, it's like interacting with everything around you, cultivating and facilitating these relationships so that everybody flourishes. Yeah, 100. Look, the fact is, if my friend is succeeding, then that is good for me as well. If somebody that I know, if I'm up against somebody for, let's say, for a TV role, and I don't get it, but I know the person who does, to me, that's still a win. It may not be a personal win, but it's a win that somebody I know that I'm close to found another level of success, which in turn, the more successful you get, the more you can pass it down to other people and lift them up with you. So anytime my friends get anything that is do something super cool, I have to take a moment and celebrate them, whether it just be through a text message and, uh, you know, a post on Twitter, whatever it may be. Just saying, hey, I see you. Congratulations. Fuck yeah. You're doing great. Nice. Very nice. You know, back to what I was saying, not a lot of people think that way. And it's very, it's a difficult shift of mindset if you're not naturally born with that. Was that something you had to work with? Because naturally, all of us have a little bit of jealousy, a little bit of why is he getting this? Why am I not? You know, and don't have that. Don't like, for, don't, I am not some enlightened creature that has found a way to be like, <laughs> whatever happens to anyone is completely fine. And I'm, no, like, I still, when I see something that I want that I didn't get of course i get jealous for a second but then i have to find a way to turn that jealousy which is a negative emotion into a positive one and it just it does take conscious thinking to do it you have to be grateful for the things you have i like to look back on my life i like to think like okay when i was 17 and i hated the world and didn't know what i wanted to do with my life and was lashing out all the time at my parents my friends my peers whatever if i told 17 year old Alex what 35 year old Alex was doing in his life all I can think is he would just be like first of all uh how that sounds impossible but second that's fucking amazing what do you he's a comedian he lives in Los Angeles he performs at the best comedy clubs in the world he's met his heroes and worked with them he's been on tv he's written books he's uh, all these things I'd be like oh well, that sounds pretty good. So anytime I start that moment where I'm just like, man, why aren't you doing better? Why aren't you going to have this? Why can't I have more? I go, but look at everything I have. Isn't that pretty good? Absolutely. We're, it, we're, we're, when you're traveling at the speed of inspiration, it's really difficult to look back at what you've done and your accomplishments. But when you're able to do that, you go, wow, I've done a lot. Well, traveling at the speed of inspiration is a great way to say it. Um, because, yeah, that's what happens to me. I get caught up in these projects and these shows. I mean, like this week alone, I was I had shows six out of the seven nights of the week. And mm. that to me, like going into that, I was like, what? How, how could I not feel grateful for that? Especially considering the year we just had and everything that all those nights when I was sitting at home, stoned off my ass, wishing I could be on stage. And now I get to be back living that again. So of course I'm going to be happy about things. And you just can't focus on what you don't have. It will drive you nuts. And you know, use what you do, what use that inspiration to create new projects and opportunities for yourself, because that's really what fuels me. When I'm on stage at night and doing like working on projects during the day, then I'm a happy person.
Absolutely. And back to what you were saying, you know, you're out here in some of the biggest comedy clubs performing with some of the best comedians out there. There's nowhere else. You are where it's at. You know, I just saw David Spade's performing tonight at the comedy store. Where else are you going to do that? Where you're seeing people like that just come onto stage with everybody else. And, and, and that's just really inspirational. Yeah, I mean, I watched Dave Chappelle last night at the store. You know, I mean... <laughs> wow, and, look at that. And, yeah, and, I, and he was the first comedian I ever saw live when I was 14 years old in 1999. And I've told him this story before, like, because we've actually, like, been able to work together a couple of times. And I told him how he was the first comedian I ever saw. And, I mean, I've just had these... This, I, had this, I had this moment where I shot something on TV, he was there, and he came up afterwards to tell me how funny he thought it was... And I told him the story and he goes, wow, isn't that crazy? You were watching me almost 20 years ago and now I'm here watching you. Isn't that nuts? And I was like, Dave, I can't even d describe how insane the fact is that I'm, that that's, that I can say that, you know? And that's, again, that's one of those moments that you look at and you go, why would I ever be unhappy about the way things are going? You know, if I have little struggles here and there, if I get rejected 40 times in a row from auditions and jobs and voiceovers and stuff like that, yeah, it starts to take a little toll on you, but then I have to go, but overall, isn't thing, aren't things pretty good? Yeah, they are. Absolutely, and, and and I forgot I heard who say this, but it's so true. Uh, you don't want it to be easy. You don't want life to be easy. We all imagine... You know, we all imagine, go ahead. Absolutely. I, I, once again, I forgot who said this, but it was another inspirational thing. It was like, I don't want to make a graceful ascension to the end of my run. I want to crash land the ship and just say, man, this was a ride. You know what I mean? In the sense that you have, you know, you have to have gone through the meat grinder. And for the people who haven't, you see that when they interact with people, people who've gone through the meat grinder and put in the work, there's a sort of, um, you know, community within that and an understanding. And again, it's back to the facilitating the relationships and back to what you said. If you're a guy nobody wants to be around good luck doing anything unless you're doing it all on your own pretty much exactly and the thing is you don't know for the most part you don't know what someone's story is when you see somebody have like a major accomplishment in their life and their career and it's something that you get jealous of for a second you don't know what that person went through to get there you don't know the trauma that they endured and the massive amounts of failure that came along with that the amount of times that somebody laughed in their face when they told them what they wanted to do then they had to overcome all of that adversity and so anytime even if i don't even if i don't like the person at, and like you know professionally or just person to person i can still celebrate a victory from somebody because i know that it wasn't easy for them to get there mm. and, th and that's a good place to be and i think even when you can say man i don't really like this guy but good for him and uh well, the same thing for me right is like look you might not love people might not love my comedy they might not love what i stand for as a human being they might not like that i'm always positive and optimistic and being silly and shit like that but i would want if i get something i would want you to at least be happy for me because you know what it took for me to get there 
you know? Yeah, absolutely. But I have a lot of respect that you've chosen a direction and you've pursued it. You can't, if you're everything, you're nothing. You know, it's like they say the unnamed spear never misses. And for you to have charted your journey and moved forward with it, not a lot of people choose to interact with anything. They choose to not exist in any form. And there's a lot of emptiness in that as well. Dude, you are a goddamn quote machine. You are just like, I swear there's just a bunch of post-it notes on the other side of your computer. And you're sort of like, all right, insert quote one, two, three, four. But you're rocking these things. And yeah, you're exactly right, man. I mean, this is, uh, I'm very fortunate that I chose, a, that I found this path because before stand-up comedy, I had no idea what I wanted to do. I was bored, I was confused, and I was bitter and angry. Because without purpose, you just kind of drift through life and you have no idea what you're supposed to be doing once i found stand-up comedy i was like oh my gift is to make people laugh and make people feel better about themselves and spread joy how can i do this every single day of my life from this point on how can i do it in a bigger capacity how can i reach more people travel to different places so it's constantly this adventure where every day is different in some way and that's just so exciting to me i don't know what's gonna like i have a sh I, I, have, I just played tennis it was great i'm podcasting with you i have a show later i could crush or i could bomb my fucking dick off and i have no idea what's gonna happen but that's part of the fun and there's gonna be a bunch of new people tonight that are in that club that have probably never seen me before and i have a chance to win some new fans and what a better way to go about the day Absolutely. Absolutely. I think anybody listening to that, wherever they're taking that in, that's what you want. Variety in your day. You're doing some, you got tennis, you got podcasts, you got shows, you know, that's, there's variety. And then, then you're at the end of the day going up out there, you know, what's the caliber of, of, of comedians looking like these days, you know, being that everybody was cooped up for a little bit. And then the people who, you know, went through that meat grinder, all of us, whether you work in film, comedy, everything, they all sort of intertwine, but the people that made it through that and a lot of people that had pilots, a little bit of success leading up to it and the COVID just chopped that right in half. We have a whole new, a whole new wave of, of everything coming out right now. Yeah, but you know what? Wait, here's what I've noticed. So, because I've been touring a bunch and I've been doing a lot of shows in Los Angeles as well. People are on fire right now as far as like the level of art that is being put out, whether it be music, whether it be comedy, whether it be painting, whatever. People are so ready to have their stuff be seen again and to be have a shared experience. Audiences are so appreciative to be in a comedy club right now. Mm -hmm. You can see the joy on their faces from the second the show starts and everyone gets comfortable when you have that one moment when everybody laughs together for the first time you forget how that energizes you you forget how it just literally changes the chemistry happening in your body and just shoots off these endorphins and you go oh yeah i'm supposed to be doing this i'm supposed to be interacting with other humans and having a thing that we can all go outside and talk about if we want to we're not supposed to be cooped up in our homes like it's just not the way it is and so right now if you have the means to go out and see live entertainment holy fuck do it because i still I'm still waiting to go to a concert. I've been to a couple like fest. I've been to a festival like, with a lot of DJs and stuff like that. I've been to a couple DJ nights, but I haven't been to a proper concert yet. And I am waiting for that <laughs> moment. I have tickets for ones in like September, October, and November right now. And I just, I know that moment when everyone's talking, the house lights are up. And then all of a sudden you see the stage lights go and you know, it's about to start and everyone has this moment of silence. And then I am going to shit my goddamn tears out of my eyes. I am going to be the happiest person in the entire world in that moment. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because like you said, we, 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 after being cooped up, we realize that's what we need. That's why this stuff has been around longer than a lot of other things. Live entertainment, we need that's that stuff. always what I've needed. For me personally, like, I'm not an internet guy. I'm not great at social media. I don't put a lot of clips online or anything because that's not the way I like to consume my media. Like, if you, I would, I, I've always been a person that goes to live shows, goes to events, does things that are at live sports, whatever it may be. I don't want to watch things on my phone, my computer, or my TV. I will as a last resort, but to me, 
I would so much rather be like, hey, who's this band? Do you want to listen to them? Or, or, or they're playing tonight. What do you want to do? I'd be like, let's go see them. Who cares? Let's just find out what they are on the spot at a live show. And that has always been what I've been into. So for me, the touring part of my career is so important because I want people to leave their home come to a place with a desired objective and then hopefully I can achieve it and they can leave going, holy shit, I really like that guy. He made me laugh. He made me think. And I like what he's about. And then, you know, it just keeps growing from there. They tell their friends, they tell their friends. Next time you go back to that city, there's more people there and it all just builds and builds until one day I have a heart attack while I'm, you know, jumping out of an airplane and, you know, that's the end of it. But so be it. <laughs> hey man, that's that wouldn't be a bad way to go because you you're a guy who started off you know in a in a, in a small town and here you are in, in Hollywood and you've done a lot of things and and you know a lot of people stay in those places and they never really get they never branch out and everybody has a different life but go ahead yeah for different reasons I mean right there, there's fear of course there's comfort insecurity but there's other people that just can't figure out what they're supposed to do. Right. And I think that is that is something that really takes time. And if you don't know, you need to actively think about it and you need to start either writing in a journal or meditating or doing something to figure out what makes me happy. When do I feel most fulfilled? When is my brain on fire? What am I doing in that moment? And how can I translate that to a viable career where people will pay me money to do that thing? Because everyone has something. When people get stuck in a job they don't like, you know, for whatever reason, maybe they had a kid too early and they needed to support whatever it is. That's, that's so punishment. It's such a punishment to me. I feel so, yeah. I really feel for those people that never get to experience what they're truly supposed to do in this world. And I think a lot of people don't find it. I think most people don't find it because it's scary to look and it takes effort. Um, but the most you know, that's why we get so inspired by people that rise out of the ashes and, you know, get to the, their place in the sun is because we see them, how, what it took. And then it's just so much more exciting and it makes us feel like we can do it too. Absolutely. I think you said it there, you know, do something, make a decision. Indecision is worse than the wrong decision. And you got to make a choice. And if you don't like your job, change the job. You know, if you're not maybe if you're good at it and you're making good money, then use that money to build something else. You know, life, especially if you don't have everything handed to you on a, on a silver spoon, you know, it's like you got to figure it out, man. If you don't like your job, who's going to save you? You're going to save yourself. Or just find something that you do love to go along with your job so your job is not the end-all, be-all. When I used to work a regular, like, a regular job, I worked at Universal Studios for years as, selling, as, selling, as a ticket seller, I wouldn't care that I had to go to that job because I knew every night I would leave that job and I would go get to do stand-up. Most people that I worked with, they would go home they would put on the TV and they would wait till they fell asleep and they would wake up the next day and repeat it all over again. Mm. And they weren't happy because they weren't actually doing anything that made them feel joy. So even if, look, look, if you're working a job you don't like, but you can go, you know, have a poker tournament on the weekend with your friends and you love doing that, you might not be able to make a career, but at least you have something to look forward to. I think you should always, as a person, have something that you're excited about. Oftentimes, instead of asking somebody, hey, how have you been? I'll say, tell me something you're excited about. Because it forces them to not just go, oh, good, fine, whatever. It was, oh, um... Oh, you know what? Actually, um, the, um, you know, the soccer, the pickup soccer game that I'm a part of, I scored the winning goal uh, last week. And so now I'm really excited to play again next week. And I'm like, perfect. Good answer. Whatever it may be. I just want to see a little fire in you. I want to, I don't like complacency. Right. Stir up the brain, get a little bit of that dopamine rush and let them think, you know, people want to be challenged. Ask them something that maybe not, well, you know, like you said, that I like that. I like that you say, tell me something you're excited about. That's awesome. Yeah. It just, it opens it up, you know, and it, 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 at that point, they can't give me a stock answer. You have to actually give me a real honest answer thing that you are excited about and i think you know it's just it's a nice way it's like sometimes people go nothing and i'm like well then don't you think that's a problem right, <laughs> shouldn't, right. you, shouldn't you be excited about something in your life 
Absolutely. Whatever it may be, even even if it was just yes, you got a new puppy, and for the first day, it did shit on the floor. Like, great, <laughs> perfect. Uh, yeah, man, ab- absolutely. Talking about this and thinking about it, that's so true. And and it's a you got to find something that fuels you because that's where the 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 mind and body start to deteriorate when you replay that same moment in reality. Right, you're going to the job you don't like. You're in a relationship you don't like. It can be a number of things, and if you keep on doing that, that's where things start to build. You know, that's where the drug problems are all cause stuff because you were just watching that TV into the the into the eyes shut off, and that's not a good way to be. But if you're interacting with things, you're loving what you're doing, you you probably are going to have a healthier relationship with everything, hopefully. I like to uh, gather up the most genuine, organic true artists that I can find and talk to them about what makes them themselves because it's something that I notice whenever I speak, you know, uh, generic answers, generic ways of being, and I like seeing the trueness in things and, and, and just seeing it for myself. That's a great answer. Yeah, I mean, honestly, talking to interesting people is just, it's never a waste of time. And a lot of times people ask me, like, what do I like so much about having a podcast? Because, I, you know, I have one, we, we are over, we're like on almost 110 episodes deep, I think, on it. It's called Achilles Heel. Um, but people say, why do you like doing it so much? And I look at them, and I'm like, when was the last time that you sat down with someone and talked uninterrupted for 90 minutes? And a lot of people go, I don't think I've ever done that in my whole life. And I'm just like, right, this is what this is what used to happen all the time. People would sit around a campfire and they would just tell stories back and forth. You wouldn't be in your own world. You know, we're in a place where we only post pictures of ourselves. It used to be like, oh, it's time for a family portrait. Let me take pictures of my friends. And now it is just me, me, me. And mm. these conversations are what stimulate me to think differently and just to all around be more empathetic to people, learn their stories, hear their struggles, all that stuff. That's why I think like one-on-one conversation is so important. And I do think it's kind of falling away with this generation a little bit that like I, my little sister's 26. She says she cannot talk on the phone. She's like, my generation doesn't do that. And if you talk to most people in their early twenties, you're right. They don't, they won't call each other. That's considered rude. Hmm. What are you doing? Yeah, I can see. I can see that. Yeah, with the FaceTiming and with the DMs, they're like, "Why are you calling me?" It's also right. running. It's a self-important thing. It's like you think you can just call me out of the blue, like I'm not living my life that doesn't right. involve you right now. <laughs> you can just not answer the fucking phone. Like you can let it go to voicemail and call back later or something like that, or just text real quick. Hey, is it important? I'm in the middle of something. You don't have to pick it up. But the fact that people are like afraid of that level of communication now, it's just, it's laughable. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's like, we're just sort of fabricating things and we're putting out what we want to be put out, but we're trying to like hold back what makes it's like you're kind of holding back half the recipe you can't do that you got it that's why another reason why i like these things because you see a lot of um the the curated stuff on the social media accounts and it's i think it's really exciting when you can actually get to know the person because i think there's a lot more there you know there's a lot more to, to dig out well, that's why I agreed to do this, right? We don't know each other, but you reached out and I looked at my calendar and realized I had a large chunk of my day that was open. And so, yeah, I could be reading a book right now and drinking a cup of coffee. I could be editing my podcast, but I have time to do all that later. So if I can have an interaction with someone that I've never met before that we can, you know, have an inspiring conversation talking about what lights us up and what makes us feel good. And then that to me is just another check of a box of a good thing I did today. And I have this little, I have this little thing in my head where I try to do five positive th- I have to do five positive things for myself every single day and you know there's easy ones like exercise uh, meditation reading writing like those are ones that I do almost every day but then a podcast a show did I go get coffee with a friend I haven't seen in a long time did I write down some ideas for a project did I film something did anything did I have sex today now that's definitely one that counts you know whatever it may be like 
if I'm doing five positive things for myself every day, then I feel like the day was in no way wasted and that I am moving forward. Yeah, so what I, basically, and the end of that is, you have to be somewhat intentional. You know, good things will just happen to you randomly, like that's just part of human existence, just as bad things will too. But the more you are intentional about how you want to spend your time and what you want to be doing, then the more things like that come true. Like, you know, they always say, like, there's no, like, luck isn't real, like, luck is just a well-prepared, a person who's well-prepared, and things like that. I do kind of believe that. Like, yes, things will randomly happen to you that will accelerate your process, but you have to have done the necessary work and steps to prepare yourself to get to that point. Otherwise, that other thing would have never happened. You know, like America's Got Talent didn't just happen to me. I made a conscious decision to do roast battle at the comedy store, then start doing it in costume, which led me to Comedy Central, which led me to America's Got Talent, to them reaching out. All of these things happened. And it wasn't just like, wow, how'd you get there? It's like, because I was putting in the work constantly and I didn't know it was going to lead there. I am constantly flabbergasted that I am on a that I have been on a family friendly TV show multiple times doing what I do. They are extremely brave to allow me on that show and do that because I, otherwise I wouldn't, that's not my show. I don't care about, I don't care about that show. I just want to go on there and be a dick and hmm. for fun and make sure they know it's all just a joke, you know? So can we talk a little bit about that? Because watching that, they did like you said, they don't, they don't bring on a lot of talent like that for unbeknownst reasons because comedy is a very, uh, it's a raw thing. You have to be ready to take it in and they let you do that. And what was that like getting invited? Like you said, you were doing the roast battles. You started to make some changes. You said, you know, we're going to, we're going to put an outfit. We're going to make it work, you know, make it a full on, full on thing from within. And what was that like when you got approached by them? Um, it was, I mean, it was confusing to say the least. Like they asked a few people from Roast Battle to come and audition. And I told them the only way that I want to do this is if I get to do it my own way. And I showed them a video of me doing it on Comedy Central when I'm wearing like a unitard and I have like flipping my tail, a little light up tail around. And I knew that that's the kind of shit that they want. They want weird, eccentric. Like they can't, you can't, it's very difficult to go on there and be like, I am a stand up comedian. Here are jokes. Da, 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 da. And I didn't want to do that anyway. So I was like, how can I go on the show, break the format without actually like um, giving any of myself away in the process? How can I be completely me and still be on a show like this? And it was a challenge that I was happily happy happy to rise to writing clean jokes for family friendly television that I know children are going to watch yet still have them actually cut through these judges enough to actually make them have a visceral reaction. That was a beautiful challenge for me to have to rise to. And I had to do it three times in horrible circumstances, pretty much every single time. And it just made me such a stronger comedian and person. How did you get invited back to return? Because the first time, you know, it, it did it. They sort of, you know, you watch it how it's shown on screen. But so that clip, um, the very uh, the first one in 2018, overall has over a hundred million views on like across platforms: YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, all that shit. So I reached out. Two of, I was trying to get on other TV shows, couldn't do, wasn't, they weren't taking. So I reached back out to America's Got Talent and I was like, hey, this was so popular and people really dug it. What if we, what if I came back and did it again? And they were like instantly just like, yes, what do you want to do? And I was like, I want to apologize, but then just it's fake. And then I just want to roast them again. And producers were like, yes, a hundred percent. You can come back and do that. So it really, and that's the thing. It's, I, so, did I get invited back? Yes. But I put myself in a place to be invited back. I don't think they ever would have just called me and said, Alex, you got to come burn these guys again. But when I reached out and said, guys, this was so popular, let's do it. And then they responded because I gave them an easy thing of, oh, we don't need to find another person. We already have one that we know is going to do his job and do something unique, original, and funny. 
very nice, man. And look at you, look at that now. Moving forward, looking at it now, your image. There's even more views on that. There's a whole trilogy there. It, it it all just came together in such a great, great way. At the end of the day, and you created that. You facilitated that. People might think, you know what, this guy just dresses up and he comes onto the show and they invite him, and and he, they don't know all that stuff you had to do to make it happen. No, and I'm I'm extremely proud of the work that I did on that show. Every one of those performances was a nightmare in some way, and I feel like I rose to the occasion. They were all like tests of me as a comedian in my stage presence, in my joke writing, in my performances, everything about in just my calm demeanor. Like can I can I walk onto the stage knowing that I'm being filmed live for 10 million people? And have no audience and still accomplish this goal. And so I look back on those things and yeah, I'm so, I'm so psyched on what I was able to achieve on that show. How much time did you have to prepare? Did you already have something prepared when you were going to make your return? You know, was it, were you ready to go back? No, I mean, I wrote, so I had to send them like a really quick video, like with some new jokes and stuff like that. But then it became, it's a process that you go through for like months of like back and forth emails. Can I say this? Can I say this? That's a little too harsh. Oh, we can't say that on TV. You can't make fun of that group of people. That, there's a lot of that going on. Oh, what about my outfit? Is this approved? I want to wear this. How do you want to stage? This? There's, there's so much back and forth. And because I did it in 2020 in the COVID season, it was even more than usual every single day was more back and forth of like ooh, we don't know if we're going to be able to bring you back we don't know if we're going to be able to shoot on the stage we don't know mm -hmm. if we're going to cancel the season maybe we're going to shoot you in your bedroom what would that look like so all of these it was every day when i would wake up to like another series of like oh what ifs so they're like okay we're on plan h now so here's what we're thinking we're going to do with you and then and then it became a process of when i actually had to be on set i was getting tested every two days i I was like, you know, people were quarantined in their hotels. I was lucky that they were shooting five minutes from my house so I could go home. But if you were not, if you were, had flown in for the show, you were literally trapped in that hotel for weeks with just only eating what they want to feed you, uh, not going to sightsee or anything because they were freaking out that if a COVID outbreak happened, it would ruin the whole show. And obviously with a show like that, there's a lot of fucking money at stake if that say if that season goes down, you know. So Absolutely. they were very careful. But you made it in there, and you you, you did it, and you it was a great show, a great performance, and it was awesome to see. Oh, everybody was up there. You got Simon even after the bike accident, and you were up there, and and like you said, no apologies, just just Alex being himself. Yeah, and I do want people, like, that's the thing, is, like, people see that, if you don't know who I am, people see that and they think, wow, I'm just this mean, psychedelic fur monster, whatever <laughs> you want to think about it, but, like, it's a joke, and people that don't understand that, I'm like, you have such a small view of what is proper for your world that you can't if you think that's actually how i walk around life like i just walk into starbucks i'm like oh hello peasants can i have a cafe latte but don't <laughs> burn it like, like <laughs> what kind of fucking weirdo would walk around like that it's a character it's just me just literally just being the silliest version of myself and the most arrogant version at the same time in real like and i have to like put something on to do that because there is this invincibility cloak that i wear when i roast so that i can't take anything personally and be hurt by what comes back at me or what is said and when i put that when i put on that imaginary costume i just go like there now we are in a different world and this is a world where nothing is real and nothing matters so let's just have fun very nice and I like that you said that those who don't know how to take it in, it's like you you have a sort of a perspective that you can't even try to convince otherwise. It's like, uh, back to, I'm going to give another quote. I know I've been giving these quotes, but it's like, those, those who mind don't matter. Those who don't mind matter. And, and, and that, that's where it's at. Those who matter don't mind. You got it. 
you got it. And I, I got that. He's a. I got that from some wicked, crazy, cool Italian guy on on Instagram that just puts out a lot of these inspirational things. And I said, I just saw that. I said, wow, that that's so good. It makes so much sense. I'll tell you. I'll drop a quote for you since you've been dropping them nonstop. One of my favorite Please. quotes that that I live by is a a thousand forests are created from a single magical acorn. And I love thinking about that because what I do, let's just say I go on, I go on America's got talent and I roast the judges who cares, right? Somewhere there's a child nine years old that sees me doing that. That goes, wow, I didn't know you could do that. I didn't know you could put on clothes like that and make fun of celebrities. That's hilarious. And then maybe it inspires him to go do something with his life. And he creates uh, this thing that then branches into all of these other things. And so you never know where your influence is going. And I love that. So I love to think that because I will go on a show and do things like that, that life will sprout beyond what I have anything to do with. And, you know, I mean, I was inspired by a lot of people too, to go do stuff like that. You know, it's just, I was inspired by festival culture. I was inspired by old school comedians like Don Rickles and modern day ones like, like Jeff Ross. And I mean, even, even people like comedy comedians, I don't love like Gallagher or something like that. There's still a piece of what I do like what he was doing in what I do, which is just so ridiculous and eccentric and kind of beyond what normal comedy is. And it takes people like that to break the format to then inspire others. And then you never, it's an endless flood of this river that just has everywhere to flow. Absolutely. And and I love that you said that because that was going to be one of my last questions for you or, or last statements rather that, it's really inspiring to think that after you did that and game came onto that show for 10 million people to watch, you definitely inspired somebody and not even just somebody, lots of people to see that and say, wow, you know, I didn't even know you could do that. Or wow, you know, I, I, I like that. That's awesome. Maybe they're going to want to do something similar. Just that, that freedom of expression and that kind of inspiration, you can't, you can't fabricate it. Right. And I'm, dude, I'm so humbled by the responses I've gotten from what I've done as a comedian. I mean, this is like, it's hard for me to say this without sounding arrogant, but I mean, I've been called a legend so many times in YouTube comments and stuff like that. And that is not a descriptor that I take lightly. Like a legend is, you know, if you think about people who are legends to you, if the fact that anyone has used that word to describe me and that multiple people have done it, that is something that's very special. And I hold, I hold a place for them in my heart because it, that inspires me even further to go, well, now I have, I got to keep living up to this standard. I have to keep not only shocking uh, myself, but my audiences. And I have to always be a, a step of the, a step ahead of the curve, ready to give them something that they were not expecting. And that's what I always tell people is like, if you come to one of my shows, the last thing I want to be is predictable. I do not want you to know what's going to happen. And it's one of the reasons why I don't release a lot of clips on the internet and stuff like that. You can find what I'm about. There's plenty of stuff for you to go watch, for you to get a taste of who I am. But I don't ever want you to know exactly what I'm going to be doing because where's the fun in that? You need a little element of surprise with it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's the difference with music, right? If you go to if you go to a concert and you see your favorite band, they better fucking play your favorite song. They better. But I'm not necessarily going to tell your favorite joke, but hopefully I tell a new one that is just as good. We want to be seduced in that way. We want that element of surprise, though. If you say otherwise, I mean, that's what you prefer. But I think people want that element of surprise, especially with comedy. You want to see the different jokes. That element of surprise, you know, all that that quickness, the a lot of that stuff. I got you there. You know, you weren't, you didn't think I was going to take that there, did you? And it's that that's what we like to see. Yep, Alex, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for being on our show today, dude. Of course, thank you so much for having me. And uh, yeah, by all means, people, follow, come to a show. I have a billion tour dates right now on my calendar. Coopercomedy.com. Go to that. You can. Do buy my book, watch my special, go to my tour dates, listen to my podcast, whatever you want, I will give you something.
Okay. How can our audience find you on social media? Uh, social media is easy at Cooper hair puff on everything. Uh, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, I have a Facebook and a TikTok, although I, I admit I do not use either of them. Um, but yeah, hoopercomedy.com is the easiest way to find me and Hooper hair puff on all social media. But if you go to hoopercomedy.com, you'll find everything, including the social media links and the YouTube page and all that good stuff. Very nice. Okay, Alex. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you. All right. We are good, Alex. Moving forward from here. Thank you.